Welcome to the Engineerable and Soul Built channel. If you've been having as much fun as we have with these Spiderball Gel Blasters, you're probably wondering what can I do to have even more fun at night by seeing where I'm shooting? Because at night, you really can't see anything. You don't know where your gel balls are hitting. You're just kind of like spraying and praying. So what you need to do is you need to add a tracer mod to the Spiderball Gel Blaster. Now the problem is that the Spiderball Gel Blaster does not have a removable tip to add a tracer mod on the end of the barrel. Not to mention a tracer mod that goes on the end of the barrel is like $70 and it's another device that you have to charge separately. And there are no glow mags available for the splatter ball either. So the solution that I've found, which is not difficult, is to install a UV LED into the T-piece inside the blaster. So here's our little UV LED and we're going to install that inside here in this part right here in the T-piece and we're gonna power it off of the blaster such that you don't need any extra batteries, it's super simple, and it's just gonna work. Once you install that tracer mod, you're gonna be able to use gel balls, like these gel strike glow in the dark gel balls. Unfortunately, you can't just use like a UV LED or a light source to light these up ahead of time because they don't glow for long enough once they're in the magazine. You really have to light them up right before they leave the barrel. The parts you're gonna to need to make this happen are these three millimeter LEDs. These are UV LEDs, 395 nanometers, and they have a voltage of three volts, 3.2 volts, 20 milliamps, and this comes with a quantity of 100. This means like you really only need one per gel blaster, so you could do like 100 gel blasters with this bag. I'm gonna use two in this gel blaster just because I have a whole bunch and it's gonna add more illumination. In addition to the LEDs, you're gonna need to buy some resistors because as you see here, the voltage is three volts to 3.2 volts. The stock battery in this blaster and most blasters is 7.4 volts unless you go up to an 11.1 .1 volt battery but then you're talking about you're gonna have to like add metal gears or metal gearbox and stuff like that to make it durable. So at 7.4 volts which is the voltage that most people are gonna be running you're gonna need to add some resistors to the LEDs to drop the voltage down from 7.4 volts to 3 to 3.2 volts. So if you're only using one LED you're gonna need a 220 ohm resistor. There's calculators online to calculate what kind of resistor you need for this. If you're gonna be using two LEDs in series for a brighter glow, then you're gonna be using a 68 ohm resistor. It's totally up to you how many LEDs you use. In this video, I'm gonna show installing two LEDs in the T-piece. The next thing you're gonna need is some wire you can use just about any type of small wire. It doesn't have to be very heavy duty wire because there's not much current running through here. And so preferably you have a red and a black wire. And instead of using some plain wires, I'm gonna use these wires with these JST PH 2.0 connectors such that I can disconnect the T piece if I have to service the blaster. You're gonna need some heat shrink tubing and this is to cover up your bare leads so nothing short circuits. The tools you'll need are a wire stripper, wire cutter, some flush cutting snips will make your life a lot easier, a drill bit to drill the hole for the LED. This drill bit is sized just a tiny bit smaller than three millimeters such that I can really wedge the LED in there and it's not going to be loose. And then I'm going to glue the LED in place. This drill bit is number 33 drill bit, just a little bit under three millimeters. Of course, you need a drill for your drill bit. You need an X-Acto knife or some kind of sharp little knife to just do a little bit of trimming and clean up after you drill. You're gonna need a soldering iron. You don't need one as fancy as this. Any soldering iron will do. Something else you're gonna need is some thick super glue or maybe you can use hot glue or something to, to hold the LEDs in place once you put them in the holes. Don't use a thin super glue because thin super glue will run and can risk damaging your T-piece. And you're gonna need some solder. You're also gonna need a number one or number zero Phillips screwdriver to take apart the blaster. The first step is gonna to be to take apart the spider ball gel blaster. You have to unscrew all these screws, take the shell apart. If you wanna watch my video on how to take it apart and reassemble it, click in the link up here before you go any further. Bam, taken apart. Once your blaster disassembled, this is the T piece and this is where we're gonna be hooking up the LEDs in here. So my first LED, I want well down below the level of the barrel and if I'm thinking like if there's a gel ball like right here, I'm going to have an LED right here shining on it. Okay. So that's my, that's my first LED. 
And the next one I want to have on the next gel ball. So I'm lighting these up nice before they enter the barrel. I'm going to remove the T piece here. I'm going to carefully drill into these two holes I've marked. I'm going really slow, being careful not to drill too deep. I don't want to hit the other side. I don't want to do any damage. And here's a second LED. Okay, I'm going to look down in there. You're going to see some chips down in there from the drilling. So that's where I'm going to take this X-Acto knife and kind of cut very carefully on the inside here to try to trim that out. I want it to be smooth on in there, in there so it's not jamming any gel balls or causing any problems. Here are the two LED holes. Not exactly perfectly centered, but that's okay. Doesn't matter too much. And you see how the LED just barely fits in there. You really have to like jam it in. One additional thing I'm gonna do is trim off the end of this LED such that it's flat and I'm gonna file it a little bit. As you see, everything forward of here is plastic. This is the actual LED diode right here. So there's plenty of plastic ahead of it. I'm going to use a file here to file down the end of this LED. I don't care if the end of the LED is rough and kind of opaque because I want it to diffuse the light actually. So I'm just going to make sure that there's no sharp edges on it. Now, if you don't want to do this much work to do your tracer mod, you can totally just leave it like a regular LED and it'll still work fine. I've trimmed off the ends of both the LEDs. I'm going to put them in here now. I don't want to pop them in too far because I don't want to interfere with the gel balls. I want them to be right at the edge of the opening. The two center leads here are negative. I'm going to connect them together. The two outer leads are positive. So I'm going to hook up a resistor, 220 ohm resistor to each one of these legs before I hook it up to the positive side. Always make sure you put the heat shrink tubing on first if you have a cable with a connector. So now I need to solder the other end of the connector to these terminals for the magazine. And I need to find out which one's positive and which one's negative. So the easiest way to do that is to trace it. So I can look here, I have positive wire here. I trace it underneath. This is the positive wire. Look to see where it goes. It goes here. And then it connects to that first contact there. 
So that's positive. And the other one is negative. Okay, so those solder connections have been made at the mag terminals. Make sure there's nothing that's short circuiting there. This cover will have to be slightly modified because this LED right here is in the way. So I just need to snip out a little bit right there. All right, that T-piece cover clears the LED now. Now these LEDs are connected in parallel and both LEDs have their own resistor. Previously, I tried to connect the LEDs in series with a single resistor and there was some kind of issue where I think the voltage would drop too low and the LEDs would not light up properly. Especially when putting the trigger on automatic, the LEDs would just go dim and like and flicker in and out. Now the LEDs stay bright. Before even putting it back together, I tested it with some glow gel balls just by holding the magazine up against it and firing it and seemed to work fine. So now we can go ahead and put it back together. I'm gonna to put the T-piece cover on first. I've made a cutout in the, little, in the T piece cover to clear the LED that's there. Then we have to make sure all the cables are all routing correctly and nothing's getting messed up in here. And put this battery latch back on. Now, if you want to see how to reassemble this blaster, I'm not going to waste your time here. Go watch my other video where I show a detailed disassembly and reassembly of the blaster.